what's up you guys um sorry about the background noise my kids over there watching barbie shows um but i wanted to read y'all this scripture i just love this psalm 23 like it is just so comforting it is so comforting um the one part of it my daughter always said for prayer i taught her this prayer this is her nighttime prayer every night but i want to learn the whole thing i'm trying to learn how to memorize the whole thing but let's say this together um because the lord is our shepherd so it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil Woo! for you are with me dear lord your rod and your staff they comfort me they, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever i just love this especially you know, when you fight your spiritual warfare, you got to understand that, baby, you going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But no, have no fear. Have no fear. Have no fear. Because God is with you. God is with you in the valley. In the pits, he's with you. In the lines, then he with you. Have no fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. He got you. He weathering it with you. Just because he with you, just because you, just because he love you don't mean you not going to have suffering. Don't mean you not going to go through stuff because you got to go through these things. You have to go through stuff. Y'all, I'm sorry my nose stuffed up. But you have to go through stuff. That's what, what give, build you character. It's what makes you strong, give you vitality, produce resilience. It forces you to be resilient. Ain't nothing out here supposed to be easy, baby. It ain't supposed to be easy. Okay. That's what make it more beautiful. Like when you go through a fight, you got to fight back. You got to fight back. We don't let these demons just win. We don't fight with these demons. We slay them. We slay them completely. We don't make friends with these demons. How about I say that? Because we're going to fight them. But you got to fight and fight the wind to slay, to annihilate them, to completely destroy them. Get them up out of here, period. You can't sit with me. No, I don't want to be friends with you. No, I'm not making peace with you. I'm going to keep my foot on your neck, period. Off with your head, <sighs> Off with your head. That's literally how you have to fight. Whatever demons you battling against, you slay them. And even if you don't win that fight, the battle ain't over yet. The war ain't over yet until the final battle. There's many battles in a war. You might win some, you might lose some, but the whole objective is to win the war, to overcome all the tricks of the enemy. To overcome all the ways he didn't try to destroy you. To overcome that. To break those strongholds. To do what you thought you never could do. Become who they said you could never be. Do the unthinkable. And let God lead your way right through it. You know. I ain't even mean to, to preach all that. But I wanted to go over this scripture y'all. Because baby, this is, this is how you fight. Knowing the word and actually applying that pressure out here. You got to apply that pressure because the enemy after you, especially when you got a big purpose over your life, the enemy going to be on you. So I told her, he already know you don't want no smoke, baby. You don't want no smoke. You might have been winning them last couple battles, but right now I'm fighting you, fighting you hard. I'm slaying you. So you can't, you can't, you can't mess with me. You can't mess with me. You didn't try to get in through this way, that way, that way. Baby, just go on somewhere. Get, get me behind me, baby. Get me behind me. Cause you, you can't do nothing with me. You can't even sit next to me. 
We ain't cool. I will never make peace with the enemy. There will be no rest for the wicked round here. I'm never going to get it. I'm never letting up off his neck. And that's what you got to understand. You never let up off his neck. Keep your foot on the gas. Keep your foot on his neck. Literally. Y'all already know how I be like. You got an auto whip. Him. Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke is free? Period. What? Like, don't let him play with you. But I love this scripture, y'all, because the Lord really is my shepherd. I shall not want. Like, it's just so... It's just so powerful, you know, because he do. He make me to lie down in the green pastures, in the valley. I got to get in there, too. I'm not exempt. You not exempt. I don't care if you chosen. I don't care what it is. I don't care. You're not exempt. He make you do that. He leads you beside the still waters. He restore your soul. Everything is about God showing his sovereignty. So, yes, he will allow the evil to come against you. He's going to let the weapons form. But they will not prosper. If you learn how to fight spiritually, you got to learn how to spiritually fight. It ain't about, you know, knuckling up. It ain't about all that. You don't got to square up on a physical level. You got to fight spiritually. You got to fight mentally. You got to have more power here. That's why mind control is crucial because that's what Satan wants. He wants your mind. Because if he gets your mind, if he can easily get into your mind, baby, he can take over your soul. He can come squatting you and live up in you and wreak havoc in your body. Just like this virus, this little bug that's out here that I didn't got because they didn't send it home to my daughter and then she didn't pass it on to me. But baby, the, the, the Satan is like a little virus. Can't wait to try to get in you and wreak havoc in you. Get you off track. Weaken you. Just want to weaken you. No, baby. No, baby. You can't stay here. Sorry. You got to go. You know? So, I just want y'all to understand that everything you're going through, you're going through it for a reason. Learn the lesson in it. Don't, you know, feel like God left you. Hey, turn that down, son. Don't feel like God left you. Don't feel like he's forsaking you because he hasn't. But there's lessons in everything you go through. And one thing about it, if you don't learn the lesson, it's going to repeat. He's trying to build character. A lot of people worry about building a big bucks up, but you're not trying to build your spirit up. You're not trying to become mentally strong. Half of the fight is about mental strength. This is why it's important to get emotional intelligence. You're not easily swayed by anything they say to you now. That's going to cause you to lose your sanity because somebody say this about you. Somebody say that about you. You're not easily just tolerating stuff. You're learning boundaries. It's really equipping you. You got to learn how to fight spiritually. It ain't got nothing to do. All that rah-rah talking stuff. Talk is cheap. You got to be about that action. Nobody cares about a person that's just loud out their mouth. That just can say a bunch of cuss words. It can say a bunch of little low blows. Who cares? What that spirit do? How do you spiritually fight that? How you let your emotions control you. That's what it's about. How you navigate them emotions? How you navigate them feelings you feeling? How do you go about that? Um, <laughs> baby, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> my cup runneth over. What? Like, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days of your life. Um, but I'm gonna leave that here, you guys. So, y'all have a great night. Well, it's night for me. I'm trying to finish up actually this that I'm you know working on where I was I put this um I put this scripture in my little project. But um actually probably by the time I post this video, it's gonna be up. This is my gratitude journals that's going up. So by the time this video get released, these gratitude journals will be available because you want to practice more gratitude. 
gratitude is beyond being thankful. It's about really acting out, They're being real appreciative about what God has blessed you with in your life. Things that you that you think is something small, something minute. You don't understand how blessed you truly are until you don't have. One thing about it, me being on this spiritual journey and giving up everything, and then after even giving up everything and getting some stuff and losing it again, it taught me to have gratitude over the small things. Having gratitude for having your health on days like this. Well, I'm already right today, but yesterday, days like this, when you get these little sicknesses, it make you realize when you are healthy, why you should be grateful, why you should thank God for your health, why you should thank God for having a sound mind, a sound body, having all your body parts functioning properly. Because on the days when you weak, days when you sick, when these little diseases and these bacteria is trying to get into you and you feel like you can barely walk and move and make you have gratitude for the days when you're able to move around. The days you're able to just walk down the steps. There's people out here who can't even just walk down the steps. And that's a blessing for you. You know, so I'm going to put the link to my gratitude journals because, y'all, I will get the I will get the really going in, you know, so. This gratitude journal, you're going to be writing about things that you're grateful for. There's prompts in here. There's some scripture in here just to uplift you. This is for believers. This is for women of God so that you can really show God how grateful you are. You might not understand how to express gratitude openly or, you know, in your prayers, but this is something that you want to start doing every day. Every day you want to make it in your duty to show that you're grateful for something. Tell God the things you're grateful for, the, the fact that you have a home. Because, baby, that's one thing One thing that I be grateful for but every day is that I have a home. Because I remember how I was just 10 months in the shelter. Really, it's been a crazy road since I left, since I left Maryland. Past couple years, it's just been crazy, period. You know? So you got to be grateful for the things you have because there's other people who don't have it. You got a way to get your kids from point A to point B. Some people don't have a car. Some people don't have the small things that you just look over every day. They don't have it. And yet you complain and complain, especially if you're a complainer and you feel like you're lacking in life. This is definitely for you. It's about 30 days. It's a little over that. It just depends on how you use it. Um, You know... But you guys, it's important to show gratitude. God ain't going to give you more until you show you appreciative of what you already have. And like I said in one of my previous videos, um, I think it was Make Room for the Blessing. I think that was the video. You can't keep praying for things and then when he bless, it with, bless you with it, you don't appreciate what you have. Saying thank you is not gratitude. Saying, oh, thank you for doing this. It's really showing that you appreciate it by how you take care of what you was blessed with. This is why people can say you ungrateful. Yeah, just because you say thank you don't mean you ungrateful because it's like, after I've done this for you, okay, that ain't enough for you. Or well, you're not even accepting of that. It's not enough for you. You know, and God wants you to, God wants to know that you happy with the small things he give you, the small ways he provide for you, the manner, the hidden manner that he provide for you before he provide you with the big things that you asking for. He want to see how you steward the small things that he bless you with. You praying for a new house, but do you keep your current house clean? I clean this house every single day. I'm about to get up and get this mess in order now because I actually slacked off yesterday. But normally, I don't go to sleep until my house is clean. And the same way I was in the shelter, I kept my, my room clean in the shelter. Kept it, kept it clean. I'm showing that I appreciate it by taking care of it. Things that go wrong, I take care of stuff. Things that I really cherish, things that you really cherish, you're going to take care of it. You're going to take care of it. You know? So I'm going to leave this video here because I'm about to get these kids together get my house in order finish up this project so i can hurry up and get it uploaded like i need to um so i'll see you guys in the next video hope y'all have a great night or if it's morning have a great day whatever it is god bless you and i wish you nothing but peace abundance and happiness and abundance of prosperity so i'll see you guys in the next video deuces i gotta fix my name <laughs> but i'll see y'all in the next video